my name is Alpheus, um, a singer. This is my 20th year and I love to sing Sky Rock Stadium Early Reggae Open. You grew up in the UK, right? Yes, I was, grew up in the London, UK. Okay. Could you tell us more about your childhood in the UK? It was nice. It was uh, in the 80s. So, you know, there was a, a lot of football and sound systems at that time was really happening, sounds like Saxon. I was a young boy and we used to follow these sounds and, you know, it was just a vibe, you know, and um, it made us want to be an artist. It, it was a good period. Okay, and uh, when did you go to Jamaica for the first time? Uh, when I was a teeny weeny teeny baby uh, with with my mother. I haven't been since. You haven't been since? No, I'm overdue. I have to go. Yeah. Okay. One day, hopefully soon. As a UK citizen, uh, yeah. what do you think of the Brexit? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> the Brexit. I wish that, my personal opinion, I just wish that there was a more easier conclusion for everyone to to make it level and comfortable for everyone. I hope that they could find a solution that possibly is better. But really I wouldn't know how to talk in length about that. Okay. I've read somewhere that your passion for singing grew when you first heard Sam Cooke on the TV show. Yes, it was when I first saw him and Sam Cooke was sitting on a chair smoking a cigarette on television and in those days it was it was normal but it was a tape it was a tape recording of his show and he just sang so easily and I was amazed okay and, um, is there any other artists from this era that you like well I, I grew up in the 80s so my my main um, sounds at the time was Dennis Brown, uh, John Hall, Marcia Griffiths, um, a lot of studio one. So yeah, but the one that stands out the most for me is um, Marcia, Marcia Griffiths because my mother played her album every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was real good, real rock steady. Okay, uh, so this is why you only sing rock steady today? I, I, think, I think it's because I, I think it's it's been, it's just because I have a natural affection for it. My voice suits it. I love the instruments, and it gives me something. Have you ever thought of recording an album or in a other genre of music, like soul music, for instance? Uh, I've never thought to really do that. Um, I, I don't think I will. But you, but you never know. But I'm, I'm transfixed on early reggae style and okay. ska. <laughs> So, um, do you remember your first studio recording session? Um, yes, it was 1997 at Studio One uh, in New York on Fulton Street and it was to sing a song called Why You Gotta Leave Me um, on a rhythm called the Tingling Rhythm and I didn't know what I was doing. It was my first time and Clement Dodd threw me in there and I didn't know what I was doing. It took a whole day to voice one song, but it was a real experience. So you were in New York City? Yes, that was um, from the late 70s, Studio One based themselves in Fulton Street in Brooklyn, New York. And um, I was living in America um, in the late 90s. And, you know, that's how I got involved with them. Tony Brevet from the Melodians took me to Studio One in New York, and that's it. It's there. Okay, and um, except Studio One in New York, did you try to work with other producers such as Wackies, for instance? No, you know what? I didn't, and I wasn't very knowledgeable about about the origin of those good labels based in New York. I wasn't very knowledgeable. I was more uh, more knowledgeable about uh, Studio One. Treasure Isle style. Um, I think I would have liked to have met them, yes. And you were one of the last artists to sign with Coxon, right? Yes, yes, I think I was. Uh, at the time when I was singing there at Studio One, there were a few other young artists. Uh, it was me, JD Smooth, Donna V, K Vibes, 
and Glen Washington. And, you know, I think we were some of the last. How was it to work with Hudson? It was, it was the best thing that ever happened to me because he was like a father. And I think because he was older, he was more freer, even more freer with his spirit. And he was so nice to me uh, and helped me to get, get the best out of my voice. You started your career in the late 80s in the UK, right? Well, it, it wasn't serious in the late 80s. It was just sound systems and just some friends, local sound system. We all tried to be like Saxon and Java sound, but it was nothing serious. But I think I've always had a natural thing to be artist. And if you didn't become an artist, <laughs> oh my, I don't know. I, I, I think maybe I think I should have been in the army. Uh, I think I should have been in the army. But I, 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 because uh, my father was in the army. He was a British soldier from Jamaica when Jamaica was a colony. And I just had this natural thing about strength and... I don't know. <laughs> you recorded uh, with uh, Roberto Sanchez on the video that was also used on the album of Keith and Tex. Yes. Uh, have you ever wanted to collaborate with them? Or yes, I would love to. I mean, Keith and Tex are fantastic artists. Um, they're very nice people. There's some, of, there's some people in, in the industry you've met that are special and nice and they are. I would like that, yeah. Have you heard the album of uh, Biddy McLean that was produced yes. by Peking? Yes, it's a fantastic album. Uh, I really like the artist's voice. The album is fantastic. Yeah. Have you ever thought of working with another producer but Roberto Sanchez? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I never told nobody this. In about 2000 and I went to Pekins and we were supposed to have a meeting with Chris Pekins. I was going to sing some songs and I went to his shop at the right time. I remember three o'clock and he didn't come. And then he called me. Yes, you're gonna, I'm going to come. Come on, come on Friday or something. I went down there again. He didn't come. So that's it. I don't go back. What are your future projects? Um, you've just released an album, so yeah. I suppose you're promoting. Yeah, album. exactly. Yeah, uh, but exactly. We just released the album. It's, it's only four months. Liquidator Music is a fantastic label. They are helping so much to help to promote it. Just really to make shows, get as many shows as possible to spread the word to good people and to work. And we're still making songs now, me and Roberto Sanchez, we're still making new songs. You know, every now and again we send each other a, a, a message of an idea. So we're still getting ready for the next next uh, thing. Do you play any musical, musical instruments oh, or yeah. you just sing? <laughs> No, I'm lazy because I should be play. I should be playing an instrument. I should be, and um, I didn't. Uh, Roberta Sanchez always says, "Hey man, learn an instrument." Uh, I said, "My my fingers are too big for the bass. Uh, my fingers too big for the keyboard." But one day I will. It's my voice as an instrument. That's it. Yeah, man, Al feels this, and I'm here at Rotterdam with JamWorld876.net. The vibes them are nice. At the end of the day, Jam World will prevail. The good we spread could never fail. We live good today and always. Jam World said, love them. Thank you for your time. Thank you.